Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Nick O'Leary and this week we are going through a topic that's been requested ever since day one. And we're going to go through the driving assistance package on Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Now before we do, as I always say, do just be careful because obviously this package can vary a lot from country to country and even model to model. So if you're not sure what's on yours, please do just check with your local Mercedes-Benz dealer and I'm sure they can help advise. Let's dive straight in to the driving assistance package. To use this system, you will of course need a package called driving assistance, and it's located here on the steering wheel. The easiest way to remember on how to use it is the shape of an L on the steering wheel. So kind of the way you draw an L. This is in the order in which you use the buttons. So select what you'd like, either active distance assist Distronic or speed limiter. Select your preferred distance to the car in front, set your speed and away you go. At any point that you're not comfortable with the car assisting, you can simply select cancel or simply touch the brake pedal. There is also a resume button just on top of the cancel button too. Let's go through a demo on how it works and how all of the parts of the driving assistance package make this whole thing one of the safest systems around. So let's get straight into the first and most popular part of the driving assistance package called Active Distance Assist Distronic. Now this system is the main basis of the driving assistance package. And the way it works is that it's constantly looking ahead using the radar located in the front bumper and a stereo camera at the top of the windscreen. And you quite simply use it using this L shape on the steering wheel. So there's a car in front of me right now, so I'm gonna set the Distronic and I'm gonna set it to the speed limit for this road, which is 70. Now my feet can actually just come completely off the pedals now and the car will monitor the distance to the car in front. It's very clever, so I can then make the car go a little bit closer or make it kind of travel a little bit further back. But the cool thing is I've set it to 70. That's the speed limit for this road. And um, it, it won't go faster than 70 because the car in front right now is doing about 55 miles an hour. So we're not actually going faster than that car. Uh, it seems all the other people are going about 70 miles an hour. As you can see, there's a yellow car just coming up to my, uh, to my right hand side now. He's obviously doing just, uh, just about 70. And uh, yeah, we're still doing about 62. The car in front sped up a bit. Again, I haven't touched anything on the pedals. I'm purely just steering. So it's, it's a very, very clever system. I said it forms the basis of the driving assistance package. It's the main thing that this does. There are a few other things that the driving assistance package does that complement the system. Now currently I'm cruising on a dual cadre. I'm doing 70 miles an hour and I'm gonna take my feet away from the pedals for this. There are two big speed limit signs just up here and it, it says 40. The second that the back wheels go past, so that is literally any second now on the screen, the car's just read it's 40 and it's slowed all the way down to 40 miles an hour. This is what active speed limit assist does. It monitors the speed signs you see on the road and will then basically change the speed to the Distronic system. It's a very, very intelligent system. Active Stop and Go Assist is another system which works in conjunction with the Active Distance Assist. And what this does is basically bring you to a complete stop. But what the car can do is actually hold for up to 30 seconds before it will automatically move away. Unfortunately, I don't have any traffic here at the moment of high dense traffic. So I'm not actually filming this during rush hour. But basically, when you come to a complete stop, the car will remain there for 30 seconds. And if you're there for longer than 30 seconds, what you'll then have to do is basically just put your foot on the accelerator and it will continue back with the distance assist system. In 
in conjunction with all the other systems, route-based speed control is a thing that actually uses GPS data. So all the GPS data and the map data, it knows where all the roundabouts and turns are and actually knows approximately what speed you should be taking to go around that roundabout safely. I'm actually just approaching a roundabout now, just gone past some speed limit signs that say 40, and now the car's recognised it's a roundabout. It's now slowing down again, I'm not touching the pedals. Obviously it is a roundabout, so I do need to be cautious of any cars coming from the other side. It's all clear. We're doing actually about 20 miles an hour, just going round this roundabout now. Again, I'm not accelerating, my, you know, my feet are literally here. You just need to obviously keep an eye on the system because it is an assistance system, it's just using all the data it can. Just gone off the roundabout, going back up the road, and it's now going back up to 70 because it's just seen the 70 speed limit signs. I didn't touch the pedal once going around the roundabout there. Now with all of this GPS, radar, stereo camera data that's fed to the car, because it's got all of this data, it can actually offer steering assistance. So what this will do is look for white lines on the road and it will offer some steering assistance as you go around corners. Basically takes the strain off those long dual carriageway and motorway drives. So as you can see here, we're actually going around just a little bit of a corner at the moment. And as we straighten out here, I'll just show you, obviously you should always keep both hands on the steering wheel at all times. If I just take my hands off just a little bit, you'll notice that the steering wheel will turn all by itself back to normal. Now, obviously for safe driving, you should always at all times keep both hands on the steering wheel. Obviously for safety and to practice good driving, but it's there as more of a, an assistance system. So as you're driving down a dual carriageway or motorway, it's there as a driving aid to help. It just takes the strain off those long, dual carriageway or motorway drives. Now one thing to note, if you have your hands off the steering wheel for an extended period of time, the car will actually slow you down and bring you to a complete stop. This is obviously there just as, a, as an aid, just in case, I don't know, the worst happens, you, you lost consciousness or something while, while driving. Uh, on top of this as well, it will actually phone the SOS emergency services just to make sure that you're okay. Obviously, there's plenty of warning in advance of the car showing you on the screen that you must have your hands on the steering wheel and it will start flashing its hazards to say it's about to do uh, this procedure. Active Lane Change Assist is a new thing on Mercedes-Benz vehicles with the Driving Assistance Package. And the way this works is I've got the Adaptive Cruise set to 70 miles an hour, but we're not doing that because the cars in front are doing about 55. So quite simply, I, I indicate right. The car will say on the screen, Lane Change to the right. It's check the blind spot to make sure there's no one there and it will overtake. And quite simply, it will now accelerate because the road is nice and clear up to my designated speed which is 70 and then when you're ready you just indicate left to go back into the lane and the car will then move you back across again very very intelligent system using all the radars the stereo camera and of course GPS data for the uh, for the speed limits as well it's very very clever active brake assist is actually standard on all new Mercedes-Benz passenger cars However, combined with the driving assistance package, it actually makes the system even more intelligent. Because it's got more advanced radar systems and stereo cameras at the top of the windscreen, it can detect cross traffic and pedestrians. So you've just got that added extra element of safety and precautions of the system just looking ahead at all times. Now this sort of feature would only ever be used in an emergency, so hopefully you never experience this. And obviously, for safety reasons, I will not be demonstrating this. But say, just down this road here, there was an object in the middle of the road or something, and you were driving down the road, and you immediately had to swerve to avoid it. Now normally most people don't make those quick turns, uh, which can obviously can upset a car's balance. So when you go to turn around, you might actually end up trying to counter steer after you've gone past the object, and lose the car's bounce and then spin out or something. So this system helps with that. 
say we do the same scenario again, you drive down the road here and you go to swerve, the car knows that object was there and will offer steering assistance to help you do enough steering to avoid it, but as soon as you've gone past, it will put the same level of steering it put into the turn to bring you back on track. So hopefully you never experienced this, but you probably won't even know it happened, but the car will obviously have done that to help save you know, someone's life or prevent a nasty accident. Active Lane Keeping Assist is very, very similar to Active Steering Assist. It uses the same technology where it's looking for the white lines, but apart from with Steering Assist where it does a little bit of the steering for you and assists you that way, Lane Keeping Assist purely keeps you in the lane. So say if I'm driving down the road and obviously the car's looking at the white lines and I just accidentally you know, started having a conversation with someone in the back and drifted over, to uh, either side of the road. The car will do one of two things. And obviously this is depending if any cars are coming towards you on the other side or anything. So if you go over a dashed white line, the car will rumble and vibrate the steering wheel saying, hang on, hey, you're going over. If you go over a solid white line, the car can actually break the opposite side of the car to jolt you back into lane. Now this isn't a, uh, a smooth motion, it is a jolt to jolt you back into lane um, because obviously you shouldn't be going over the lane uh, without indicating. Obviously if you do indicate and go over a white line then of course it won't do anything. Uh, but if you did drift over a, a lane marking without indicating it can either rumble or pull you back into lane. Now, Active Blind Spot Assist works with all cars that have driving assistance package. The way this works, it uses the sensors at the back of the car to detect if someone's in your left blind spot or your right blind spot. So that's at the very, very back or the back over here. So what it will do is monitor if a car has entered into the blind spot. And if it has, you'll get a red warning triangle appear in your mirrors, indicating that you need to be careful someone's in your blind spot. There's a car just literally about to overtake me. In my blind spot there's a red warning triangle just there. If I indicate it will flash to say careful there's a car in the blind spot. So it works at the rear and towards the side of the car as well just in case. Now this one also doesn't come with a demonstration but it's called PreSafe Plus. And what PreSafe Plus does, say you're waiting here at a junction and you're just waiting to turn either left or right, and the car behind crashes into the back of you. A few seconds before that, the Mercedes-Benz will actually flash its hazard lights really, really, really quickly. It will then move the seat into a certain position right before the crash to prep you and put you in the best position for a crash. And you'll also find the seat belt will actually fire off in certain ways just to kind of hug you into the seat and prep you for for a crash so a crash is obviously not a very pleasant experience but the car does its best to try and put you in the best position to experience the crash so all these things work in the background hopefully you never experience pre-safe plus but one day it could save your life and there we go guys, that concludes today's video on the Mercedes-Benz driving assistance package. As I said, it's all based off that one thing, the Active Distance Assist Distronic, and all the other little things kind of complement that original system. So if you like today's video, do hit that like button and do subscribe if you aren't already, and only if you want to see any future videos like this uploaded every Friday at four o'clock. Until next time, we'll see you all then.